Hi there everybody, my name is Elliot Pister for Denbo. You have dialed into the first installment in our webinar series called Terra Seeding versus Hydra Seeding, which, why, and when. Uh, we're going to spend about 30 minutes talking about uh, the characteristics of Terra Seeding. For those of you that might be a little bit confused between Hydra Seeding and Terra Seeding, um, hopefully we'll uh, clear that up for you and dispel some myths. Um, I am uh, Elliot Pister, I'm Sales and Marketing with uh, Denbo. Uh, Jared Taylor is going to be leading the presentation today, he's our expert on the subject. Uh, Jared has um, many years of experience uh, with Denbo and outside of Denbo uh, with Terra Seeding as a technology and um, following the presentation if you have any technical questions if you have any projects that you're working on that you think that there might be some application for Terra Seeding, uh, Jared would be the, uh, the guy that you want to get in touch with. So he can be reached at jaredt at denbo.com. That's J-A-R-E-D-T at denbo.com. Uh, and I think without further ado, I'll introduce Jared now and um, we'll get started on the presentation. Well, hello everyone. Uh, as uh, Elliot said, thanks for joining us today. Um, just give you a little bit of history on, um, well, first of all, can everyone see the screen there now? Yeah. Okay, good, good, excellent. Okay, um, what we're going to do is just uh, speak um, about types of seeding, um, seeding techniques first, and then we're going to talk about terra seeding. Um, some of you may know what terra seeding is, may have seen it, may have heard it, may have specified it, but it is a, a new technology and um, so we will talk about terra seeding, what makes it a little bit different, how it works, um, but we'll also talk about compost because growing mediums are an integral part of the terra seeding process, unlike um, other methods of seeding, you're, you're relying on a growing medium to grow something, but it's not part of the process. Um, so, as many of you may know, the, the most common methods of seeding um, are broadcast seeding, drill seeding, and then hydro seeding. Um, and again, terra seeding is one that we're going to talk about uh, about today. So we've all seen this uh, broadcast seeding is just broadcasting seed, right? Uh, it could be done with a hand-held um, seeder. It could be done with a push seeder. It could even be done with an implement seeder like an ATV seeder. Um, it is the most cost-effective method of, of seeding. Um, you know, it's, Uh, it, it's, you know, the issues with it, you know, it, it's simple, so I guess that's a pro, but the cons are, you know, difficult to see, you know, do you have the right coverage in terms of seed getting in the right places? Um, and the other thing, of course, is it's subject to weather, soil conditions, moisture, that type of thing. So um, broadcast seeding, you know, while it's used wi widely in, in forestry and, um, you know, just uh, touch-ups and that type of thing. It, it is kind of the lowest cost and the most ineffective method. Um, drill seeding, um, we don't know a lot about drill seeding here. We don't do a lot of it in, in, in this part of the world, British Columbia, um, but of course a lot in the prairies. Um, but drill seeding is actually a, a process where the seed is actually pushed down into the growing medium that's there. Um, so it's the primary type of seeding that's used for um, establishing uh, crops, you know, corn and that type of thing. Uh, and it is used quite widely in some parts of the U.S. and Canada for revegetation seeding. Um, you know, some turf uh, applications and then roadside revegetation seeding. Um, it, again, the pros, it's very cost effective. It works very well in that you're planting the seed where it needs to be, right in your growing medium. Um, it's efficient, you know, it can be very large scale uh, with implements and that type of thing. Um, of course, the cons are that it's, it's kind of limited in where you can use it. And uh, again, I said we, we use it in other places of the country, but not so much here. And that's because of, one number one, our topography. It's just kind of limited to, to flat ground. Um, scale of projects is a bit of a consideration too, because they're generally 
large projects lend themselves to drill seeding because you're bringing out a bunch of equipment uh, in order to get that done. You know, unless you're using the little apparatus on the top, which uh, uh, would be fun, but not for very long. Um, hydro seeding uh, is a common, um, you know, very common uh, trademark name actually, but it's uh, it's really hydraulic seeding is is the kind of the generic term for it. But um, you know it's the act of uh, mixing a seed and water in a slurry, often with a fertilizer or other additives, depending on what it's being used for. Um, it is hydraulically applied, so that's sprayed, um, and you know very small units to very large units. Um, on the bottom there you'll see that uh, you know uh, helicopter applications have been used very successfully it's an amazing technology um, and uh, hydro seeding really enables us to be able to to seed on large scale at very cost effective uh, you know co cost effective dollars and um, if it's used appropriately and um, the seeder is aware of the challenges or the specifier is aware, aware of the challenges of the growing medium and the site conditions in terms of erosion control, it can work very well. Um, it's very, you know, adjustable in terms of scale. You have the small guys that do the small little jobs and the big guys that do the big ones. Um, but again, yeah, uh, problems with weather, soil conditions, uh, if you, you know, no matter how good your, your technology is, if you're trying to seed on, um, on rock or, or really poor soils, it just uh, will not work, of course. So, um, and then the other thing that's, um, you know, maybe not apparent as much, but, uh, and we're going to talk about this, is the issue of soil structure and the role that the top layer or the O horizon of the soil plays in things like stormwater management and erosion control as well as fertility. Um, and so if we're relying always on our site soils or if we're having to specify and bring in, you know, imported growing mediums that are very costly, um, you know, hydro seeding is, has challenges there. Um, so on to terra seeding. Um, terra seeding is a process that is about, let's say about 10 years um, old. It uh, was developed in the States and we have been terra seeding for about six years here in British Columbia. Um, so it, it's, it's a new technology where, you know, we're um, introducing it to people all the time. We're learning what works well here, what doesn't work well here. Um, but it is a seed injection process. So um, it's a process where we need two ingredients. We need our seed and we also need a growing medium. And the growing medium is loaded into a, instead of a, a you know, a a tank like a hydro seeder would be or a hopper the growing medium is loaded into a, a pneumatic blower truck and the same type of trucks that blow bark mulch um, or shavings or sawdust or whatever um, but it's loaded into a blower truck and then there's a seed hopper on it as well and it's a process where the seed is actually injected into um, the growing medium as it's blown so you're planting the seed as well as um, you know, instead of putting it on the top of the growing medium only, you're, you're planting the seed. Um, so that's what terra seeding means, terra, soil, uh, with seed. Um, if we look at those other types of seed establishment that we talked about, you know, terra seeding or broadcast seeding and drill seeding and hydraulic seeding, terra seeding kind of offers the best of both worlds. It's, it's almost like drill seeding in that you're planting the the seed where it needs to be to grow and be protected and and be around um, nutrition uh, but in some ways it's even better in that you're providing a tested growing medium whether it be a, a bc landscape spec soil or whether it be a growing medium for a roof a vegetated rooftop or whether it be um, a product we called eco blanket for erosion control um, you're supplying the growing medium that's been tested, that has nutrition, that has water holding capability, as well as the seed at the same time. Um, it's probably important to note that application depths vary depending on the site. And this is where we really need to know what the site needs and we need to be clever in terms of 
um, you know, the soil type and uh, the moisture characteristics. But uh, a typical application might be a half inch average depth, even to say a four inch depth application for uh, you know, Ministry of Transport type jobs where they're looking for, for four inches of growing medium. So that uh, on the top you'll see the, uh, just a picture of a seed injection unit on a blower truck to see what it kind of looks like. Again, it is electronically calibrated so we can tell what our, um, our seed rate would be per hectare, for instance, that type of thing. Um, the other things are added characteristics um, of terraceding is, like I said, you have a tested growing medium, but you can really get specific with the type of growing medium that you want for the application, just like you would with a hydro seed mulch um, or a fertilizer or a seed mix, you can specify the growing medium for the application. So typical applications that we use here um, and you should be aware of is, you know, turf. If it's an application where you're wanting a turf blend soil, uh, typically 50% sand uh, by, by volume for, you know, high turf area, high traffic areas, um, you, you'd want a turf blend soil as your growing medium and then you would tear a seed that, so you'd inject the seed into it. Um, you can do that with garden blend soils for other areas. Um, top dressing, um, where you're not just, say, uh, spreading a half inch compost or, um, or an organic medium or even a mix on its own and then seeding, you can do it all at once. Uh, again, your seed is right where it needs to be, kind of hidden in the growing medium. Um, for reclamation and erosion control work, we use uh, um, a, a compost-based uh, growing medium called Eco Blanket, which is engineered for steep slopes. I'll kind of show you what that looks like in, in some pictures as we go. Um, you know, vegetated rooftops, you can be terraceding your, um, your growing medium and even retaining walls. Uh, we seed retaining walls as we're installing them. And so your growing medium and your seed are inside of the wall and you're, you know, you're really growing your vegetation out rather than trying to spray over top uh, with hydro seed or whatever and trying to get your vegetation to, to root into it. Um, so it's very important, uh, as I say in the bottom there, that growing medium should match the site soil and the application requirements. So that's a key thing here as terra seeding is the process, but you have to choose just like your seed or your fertilizer, you need to choose the growing medium um, in order to, to really fit the application properly. So I'm gonna kind of diverge a little bit from just terra seeding and talk a little bit about compost because all of our growing mediums and the terra seeding growing mediums that are, that are being used are um, you know, compost based. And so we'll diverge a little bit and just talk about compost and how it works and why we would want to use it in landscapes. Again, if you're a specifier, you know, most specifiers here are on board with using compost of one type or another for landscapes for, you know, reasons like weed suppression and that type of thing. Um, but we'll diverge a little bit and I'll kind of talk about a little bit of research and then we'll come back again to how terra seeding fits into that. So, um, you know, with terra seeding, we're, we're using, we're promoting natural soil conditions because we're using um, compost which is alive with microbial activity and, and soil biota and that type of thing. Um, soil structure is very important, especially for stormwater management and erosion control. And it's been proven, I'll show you some research, research in a few minutes, it's been proven that that top layer, you know, your one or two inches, your O horizon of your soil is very important um, for stormwater management and erosion control. Um, invasive species, again, um, you want to be using, specifying um, a terra seed growing medium that's been through a, a proper composting process so that you're not introducing weeds uh, or pathogens to the site. Um, filtration is really more on erosion or sediment control side. Um, Elliot had mentioned that we're, uh, this is kind of the first in our session, um, session of, uh, of webinars for this year. We are going to be holding one. The next one will be on um, using compost for erosion sediment control. Um, so it really applies more to that. But there's some really interesting things that um, have been shown that, that compost can do in terms of chemical um, um, reacting over time with things like hydrocarbons um, and then being able to filter runoff and that type of thing.